So this week we're exploring how to analyze trends. Now the first aspect we're going to look at is a concept known as megatrends. Now these are trends that are happening generally at a global scale and with a wide ranging impact across the whole of society and normally having a very significant impact or a very long term impact. And these are aspects that we define as megatrends. Now, there are various reports that are conducted regularly around these trends to try to identify them and to provide information on stakeholders on how they can engage with these trends in order to be successful. Um, the Euromonitor Megatrends Report looks at various worldwide trends that are occurring and tries to um, predict some of the impacts of these trends. So artificial intelligence has been one for a while now, and of course we're seeing some of the impact of that now in society. But there are other trends. Um, privacy is a big trend that is going to have a significant impact upon education, typically K-12 education. Universities have been coping with it for a little while, but it hasn't impacted strongly K-12. Um, there's been an assumed right for teachers and schools to collect data on students and to record that data for various internal processes. That is being challenged. Um, and we may end up in a situation where to collect test data on a student, we have to seek their express permission and their parents' permissions and to store that data only as long as is absolutely required and then show processes about how that data is disposed of and so forth, as is happening in every other sector. So we're starting to see a little impact upon that now with some major releases of private data from educational institutions, from K-12 systems. And how that then plays out and the restrictions that are put into place on education systems will occur over the next few years. And that will have an impact upon how education is conducted in schools. So there are other trends identified. Um, how commerce is changing and the blurring between retail and wholesale, where now, of course, of the internet, we can purchase items directly from factories or from wholesalers rather than having to go through retailers. And that changes quite dramatically the whole commercial relationships that occur around the world. Um, and that has a major impact upon local commercial um, retailers, such as those that have brick and mortar shops and things of that nature but also potentially on some of the major re online retailers as well, which have really been acting as brokers between wholesalers and consumers. But if consumers can go straight to the wholesalers, then that opens up a whole lot of other opportunities to circumvent um, the retail processes. So have a look at some of these trends, such as multifunctional homes, being able to use a home as a workplace, for example, that became very popular during the pandemic, but that is now being entrenched. So not just having a home office, but envisaging the home being repurposed during the day as a workplace, and then being repurposed again at night as a home recreational place. So the whole range of different ways that we can reconsider our traditional approaches to um, architecture and to um, built infrastructure uh, a lot of companies, for example, at the moment are reducing their inner city um, office spaces. Of course, people don't want to go there and work in those locations. They prefer to work at home or in locations close to their home. So this is changing dramatically how we have laid out our cities and our transport infrastructure and a whole range of other issues, which is why it's considered a mega trend. So look at some of the other trends such as frictionless mobility, particularly in China with their large scale um, fast train network. Um, but we're seeing that happen in Australia with the reintroduction of fast trains into Australia as a result. Um, so there's a whole range of different impacts of these trends and understanding them can help us better place ourselves and place our students to take advantage of these trends into the future. Now, locally, the CSIRO, the 
Commonwealth Scientific Industrial Research Organization um, in Australia has set out a number of mega trends that they've identified in Australian society, um, such as making do with more from less. So the idea of being more conservation minded, recycling, repurposing, um, repairing, rather than throwing away and having rampant consumerism. Um, the understanding that the loss of habitats and loss of diversity in our ecosystems is having a big impact, particularly on agriculture. Uh, the Silk Highway and the fact that economic strength is shifting from the west to the east and also to a certain extent from the north to the south. Um, and that changes the economic dynamics around the world. There's the idea of, of us aging a lot more, um, being able to live a lot longer, but also being able to be active and productive a lot longer. But if we were still retiring relatively early, then that has big implications for those retirees as to what, what they spend their time on. And a number of them are choosing to spend their time in educational pursuits. But this is very different to preparing um, young people for the workforce, which is what's been the main focus of our traditional education system. If we're now having equal numbers wanting to have educational experiences for self-betterment rather than for work purposes, that changes dramatically how we've structured our universities and TAFEs and vocational education and a whole range of other processes. Um, so that's going to have a big impact upon education. Likewise, the virtual um, nature of society, where we're becoming more and more used to video conferencing, but also potentially with virtual reality and augmented reality and telepresence, being able to um, experience locations and engage with others remotely through technology is having a major impact as a mega trend. And then finally, the expectations are increasing to rise, where apart from a little current blip around um, purchasing of new homes, generally we expect to live longer than our um, previous generation, to have more access to better technologies, to have better health care, to be better infrastructure, and a whole range of things that we, we have this expectation that things will be better and better. Um, and that puts great demands upon a society. So there's some of the trends that have been identified, or mega trends that have been identified in Australian society. And then we have regular OECD um, mega trends, um, the Office for Edu um, Economic Sonic Development, um, but the UN agency looking at um, economic development around the world. And they've identified a number of major trends that they're seeing. Now, globalization is a big one that's been around for a number of years but it's continuing to increase. Um, there are still certainly a number of countries, particularly in Africa and South America, that haven't really embraced globalization, but certainly um, in East Asia, Europe, America, Australia, we've tended to embrace globalization quite significantly. Being able to purchase things from anywhere in the world and have them delivered in a reasonable amount of time, being able to sell to customers anywhere in the world. These change the dynamics of our economic systems quite dramatically. But it also has big impacts upon employability, being able to be employed by a workforce anywhere in the world and to employ workers from anywhere in the world have big implications, particularly as we have different standards and different pay rates and um, working conditions in different countries. And of course, that then opens up a range of areas for exploitation, but also for some countries to progress by utilising their low-cost um, workforce as a means of engaging in economic development. Digitalization has been a big area, uh, but again, it's not uniform. There are big areas of the Pacific, and of Africa and South America and so forth that haven't engaged well with technology and digitalization. And while for other areas, particularly in the West and East Asia and South Asia, digitalization has produce fantastic benefits and um, increases in productivity and education in a whole range of areas. It's not the same everywhere. But we can certainly expect to see more and more of that occurring, particularly as linked with other mega trends such as artificial intelligence. 
And then there's that aspect of aging again, where we've got an increase in population that are over the retirement age. Um, do we increase retirement ages so we can keep them in the workforce longer? Do we work out other ways of in, um, allowing them to be productive or contribute, particularly to families, um, which have been a traditional role, which has been degraded in the West um, with our focus on work productivity for many, many years. So a whole range of issues that can be explored around that mega trend. So what I'd like you to do is to have a look at the CSIRO and the OECD reports and think about how these mega trends may be impacting upon your life or the lives of your students or your work life. How will it change the way you work into the future? And share those in the teams.